Hey, this is David Osteen, pastor of Hope Bible Church in Locust Grove, Georgia. And I received a question several weeks ago concerning 1 John 3, 9. And so we'll deal with that on this uh, video. And let me just say I'm, I'm a little bit behind on my question and answer uh, videos. I uh, have a growing list of questions to get to. So if you're waiting for me to answer a question you sent me, I will do my best to get to that uh, as soon as I can. And uh, I've, I think this is the third video I've made this week, so I'm trying to catch up. But generally, I'll only be able to do about one or two a week. So 1 John 3, 9 is a very difficult verse. It says, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he's born of God. Um, let's, let's read a little bit of the context, beginning in verse 6. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Now, the, of course, the so-called holiness groups out there misuse this passage to try to support their false doctrine on the eradication of the sin nature. And the Bible does not teach that doctrine. Uh, the Apostle Paul himself never could eradicate his sin nature. He, um, for an example, in 2 Corinthians 12, uh, talked about the thorn in the flesh uh, that, uh, that, that was given him lest he be exalted above measure because of the abundance of the revelations. And so it, it, he needed help to keep him humble. Uh, and uh, the, I could show you so many verses where Paul makes it clear that the sin nature is not eradicated in this life. The only, time we'll, the only way we'll get rid of the sin nature is either through death or the rapture when we're changed. And so it is possible for believers to sin, and they do. Now, first of all, this passage is not written to the body of Christ in this present age of grace. John was an apostle to the circumcision, and uh, he writes especially concerning those who will be living in the last days just before uh, the second coming of Christ. It has special application to tribulation saints, and uh, John writes to uh, exalt the true Christ and expose the Antichrist. And he writes to show the distinction between the true followers of Christ and the children of the devil who are posing to be children of God, the tares among the wheat. He gives a series of tests uh, throughout 1 John to show the difference between the children of God and the children of the devil. And the doctrine of it lines up with the tribulation. It lines up with the kingdom program of Israel. Uh, it's not written to the body of Christ. Now, a lot of people will find fault already with this over what I just said, and I'm not going to have time in this short video to explain all of that, but I do have verse-by-verse -verse teaching through the epistles of John available on our website, hopebiblechurchga.com. It's audio messages. We go verse-by-verse -verse through 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. And so if you're interested, you can uh, check out that resource but uh, this is a, di a difficult passage because, you know, it's taught in 1 John that tribulation saints can sin. I mean, 1 John 2, 1 said, My little children, these things write unto you that you sin not. So that's the goal. But then he said, And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. So he shows it's possible for them to sin. And then in 1 John 5, he said in verse number 16, if any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life. For them that sin not unto death, there is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. We'll talk about what that is in just a minute. 
All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. Now, we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. But notice in here he talks about a brother that can sin, and it's not unto death. But then he talks about the sin unto death. So it is possible and uh, for the tribulation saints to sin. So what, what? I mean, he plainly says here, though, that those who uh, abide in him don't sin. Those who are born of God don't sin. I mean, so what, what? how do we deal with this? Well, I think the common uh, ways people have tried to explain this is, first of all, some say, well, John's talking about practicing sin, not just committing a sin, but living in sin. Uh, and you notice the ETH on the end of the words, for an example, in verse 8, he that committeth sin is of the devil. And um, Elizabethan English is wonderful, and it's important, and the these and the thous and the yees and the ETH endings, all that very important in Bible study. And it is true that the ETH puts it in a durative tense. Uh, so I, I understand where they're coming from when they say that, when they say, well, look, if you live in sin, that's what he's talking about, not just that uh, if they sin at all. However, verse 9 is pretty clear. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. He didn't say uh, committeth there. He said whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Besides that, I mean, even if you just sin once a day, uh, that would still be practicing sin. Okay, it's still continual sin. So I don't think that's the explanation. The other, the other common explanation is that John is talking about the new nature, uh, the Spirit of God uh, within them. It says in verse 9, whosoever is born of God, so therefore they have the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God is the new nature, and the new nature does not sin and cannot sin. And that's true, and I understand where they're coming from on that. But is that what he's actually saying here? Uh, in the passage. You know, it's clear that it, it says, uh, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. And we know what that seed is. And 1 Peter 1.23 talks about being born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And if you follow that carefully in 1 Peter, he's talking about the word of God as in what was prophesied in the Old Testament. And you can see that in that context. And so we know that those that have the word of God abiding in them in the tribulation are going to be a righteous people that cannot sin because the law of God is written in their hearts. That's a foreview of the salvation of Israel as a nation under the new covenant. Uh, they will all know the Lord and have the law written in their heart, and God's Spirit will cause them to do His commandments, as it's written in Ezekiel 36. And so uh, there are individuals in the tribulation that have a foretaste of this, but th th there's a difference between individual salvation and salvation as a nation. Um, and so this matter of, you know, back in verse 6, whosoever abideth in him, and, of course, in John 15, Christ talked about having the word abide. And so um, back in verse 24 of chapter 2, Let that therefore abide in you, which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you shall continue in the Son and the Father. And, of course, that's not doctrine for the body of Christ in the age of grace. This is for tribulation saints. They must abide. They must continue. And as long as they do that, they cannot sin. So there's possibility of sin, but there's a couple things to keep in mind if we're going to understand this passage, okay? Uh, first of all, again, uh, in regard to the new covenant, they're going to be filled with the Spirit and have the power to live above sin. Uh, that's how it's going to be in the kingdom, according to Ezekiel 36 and other passages we can point to in prophecy. So the tribulation saints, if the individual tribulation saints having God's Spirit being born of God... Uh, that would be a foretaste of that. Uh, not only that, but there, I think this is especially the point here that we need to think about. There's a particular sin in view throughout 1 John, and that's that sin unto death. So when he says, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, that could be in just in reference to a particular sin, that sin unto death, 
in 1 John 5, verse uh, 16 to 18, which we already read, he talks about a sin unto death that not even don't even pray about it. And, that, and, of course, in the tribulation, those who take the mark of the beast and worship the beast will be cast into the lake of fire. They, they're not saved. They cannot be saved. And so as long as they're abiding and, and uh, uh, you know, and that's the ter that term is never used by Paul in regard to the body of Christ. We're sealed with the Spirit. But these tribulation saints have to abide. And so long as they're abiding, they're not going to worship the beast. But there is that potential danger that they draw back and fall away. That's the language used in Hebrews chapter 6, chapter 10. And so there's a strong warning here. Because you notice that sin unto death, he said, who, we, in verse John 5, 18, we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. And that would be in regard to the Antichrist, Satan filling the Antichrist, the issue of the mark of the beast, and all of that that's going to play out. So I think that understanding that it's possible for them to live above sin as long as they abide, and if they do that, they'll not commit especially a particular sin, which is the sin unto death that has taken the mark of the beast. That's how I handle 1 John 3. There's more that can be said, but uh, hopefully that'll be enough to help with the question. So if you have a question or a comment uh, about the, this series of videos, uh, just uh, contact me, send an email, leave a comment on YouTube. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching.